Low ready. And advance. Stay down, do not move. Keep your hands up, keep your hands up. I said keep your hands up. Ah! To John Norris, that paper target is much more than a training exercise. How he reacts on the line can literally save his life, especially when those he comes across in the field often place little or no value on human life. That was cool. That was cool. Norris leads a small band of game wardens in California, known as the Marijuana Enforcement Team, or MET. That team goes to battle every day with the dangerous drug cartels that are destroying the environment through illegal marijuana operations in the California hills. Even when we train on paper targets, we don't consider that a paper target. We're envisioning that that's a real deadly force threat, that we're on a mission, it's turned sideways, and we have to deal with it. And if we train with that mindset, we're more likely to survive the real thing. You are going into the unknown. What's on the other side may know you're coming. Hi everybody and welcome to Modern Shooter. You know, it's occurred to me recently that most Americans curl up in their bed at night and sleep pretty soundly, and rightfully so, because for the most part, the United States is a very safe place to be. Sure, a bunch of us sleep with handguns by our bed just in case, but overall, the United States is extremely safe. Over my shoulder right here, that's California's Silicon Valley. And between all those people in this spot I'm standing right here, there's a war going on. Yeah, between right there and right here. It's a hidden war, and it's happening right under our noses. When I saw what type of environmental destruction and the decimation of a waterway, um, the dead wildlife, uh, the armed growers in the grow site, it completely blew my mind. We're talking millions of dollars at stake here. One grow site of say 10,000 plants. On the black market, you're looking at at least about $1,000 a pound, and that's on the low end. And when this stuff makes it over to the eastern seaboard and Midwest, it can be as much as $4,000 a pound. If each plant in a grow site, in a, in, a, in a cartel grow site, yields about a pound, conservative, sometimes more, you're talking you know, anywhere between $5 million profit and in these larger grows, $30, $40 million profit on one grow site. That's a whole lot of money and a whole lot of incentive to risk getting caught, you know, be out you know, in our, in our woods doing what they're doing. And that's one of the reasons it sometimes gets violent because these guys will defend their grow because they have so much to lose. Uh, and that's why it gets so violent. And that's why we deal with the threats as we need to and why they're so dangerous for us and the public. Just a few miles north of Silicon Valley is Eagle Mountain Range, the training home to the Met team. It's here John Norris and his team members train for the situations in the field that might bring them face to face with a deadly situation. Do you know that most gunfights happen within 21 feet? That's only seven yards, that's super close. So even the untrained gun handling suspect or assailant or threat can get a lucky shot and do harm to you. So you need to be able to shoot quickly and you need to be able to get out of the way of the threat's uh, line of fire to save your life or the life of the ones you love. In addition to team members, John does training with civilians interested in learning the techniques he teaches his team. Good. Good. Break up that tunnel vision. Back to the holster. Nice. But this is where we are approaching somebody to contain them, maybe in our house, maybe on our property, in a law enforcement setting or tactical setting. We're approaching a suspect that might be down or not down. We don't know, but we've got a, a weapon on them. And what's gonna happen is, as you're approaching, suddenly, even though you're telling them, keep your hands up, let me see your hands, I've called the police, keep your hands up, I'm gonna call a threat. You gotta open the distance and you got to engage them to stop the threat because now it's gone to deadly force. Now after I've engaged that threat I'm scanning my surroundings right because maybe that's not the only bad guy out there because the first thing that's going to happen in a gunfight and we speak from this from experience is instant tunnel vision. The second you see that gun everything goes into a kaleidoscope of just a tight little magnified telescope. Everything in the peripheral you're just not paying attention to so we want to engage that threat but it doesn't mean it's the only threat. Shooters ready. Advance! 
Drop your weapon. Drop your weapon. Please be cold. Drop your weapon. Drop it. Drop it. Flat. Drop it. Stay together. Watch your partner. Good. Good. Watch your partner. Good. Scan. Breathe. And holster. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent, guys. Look at the hits. Look at the hits. All upper yeah. thoracic. Good job. <clears throat> right on. Good job. That was straight heat, guys. It really started about 15 years ago when we noticed a dramatic shift in the aggression and the violence of our environmental criminals here in California, specifically the international drug cartels growing all this illegal poison marijuana. Uh, we had to turn the tables and advance our tactics with a lot more progressive training to protect what we're blessed to still have in this beautiful state. Okay, so on this next drill, we're going to be doing combat reload drills where each one of my shooters, starting with Teresa, then down to Laura, then down to Al, will each have an out-of-battery combat reload need, and the other shooters not experiencing that will, of course, support them as they get through the reload drill. This will be the red-green combination, so when one of my shooters goes down without ammunition to finish it, finish off a deadly force threat, uh, they will have the support of one and or other one or two guns supporting them while they get back in the fight. Okay, shooters, we're gonna be doing combat reload drills. Cover your partner when they go dry with a red-green sequence. By the numbers, lateral step to the right, three shots upper thoracic. Shooters ready. Ready. Threat! Right, right, right. Come on! Come on! Good job, T. Way to get back in it. Way to get back in it. Good, 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 good. Scan. Breathe. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. All good hits, nice and smooth and nice and fast. That's exactly why we do this drill, because in a real life situation, if someone goes dry and you have the blessing and benefit of a secondary or tertiary shooter to help you, this is as real it gets to save lives. Coming up next, the intensity of coming face to face with these cartel camps. It's clear why the MET team has to perfect their training. This is Modern Shooter. Modern Shooter is brought to you by Agula Ammunition, Feed Your Firearm, by h, h Precision Rifles, engineering precision rifles and components for the world's most demanding shooters, Six Hour Electro Optics, see the difference, by Securit, Intelligent Firearm Storage, by Gun Digest, we know guns, so you know guns, by Turnbull Restoration, specializing in the accurate restoration of historical metal finishes on period firearms. And by Benchmark Barrels, world-class accuracy made in the USA. This area just north of California's Silicon Valley may appear peaceful, but a deeper look into these hills reveals another story. Suspects on the run. Pump. Good girl! Good girl! Go, 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 go! Drug cartels continue to wreak havoc in this area through illegal marijuana operations. Combating these dangerous and environmental killing operations is the job of California Game Warden John Norris and his marijuana enforcement team. You know, and this isn't legitimate sanctioned legal marijuana like we have as an example here in California. We're talking about drug cartels that are trespass growing under public and private lands using banned toxics and insecticides that are so toxic and devastating. They were banned by the EPA over uh, a decade ago. And this stuff is on the marijuana bud itself that's being sold all over the country in the black market unknowingly to users. This is in the waterways that's killing big game species, small game, and uh, animal and wildlife habitat. These cartel groups aren't only running around in California, although California is the epicenter of it, they're in 25 other states nationally, and not only growing illegal marijuana and poison marijuana and diluting waterways, they're producing methamphetamine, they're trafficking humans, they're running guns, they're doing a lot of other criminality that is another issue. The illegal grows are million dollar operations. Because of that, the cartels will go to any degree to protect them. A high point nine millimeter. That means the members of the MET team have to be ready for any situation, which requires the most intense of training. Covering! When we're dealing with drug trafficking organizations and cartel-run uh, marijuana growers, you never know what we're dealing with as far as the violence goes. These guys many times have guns. 
It's a multi-million dollar cash crop they're trying to protect and oftentimes they will go to guns and we need to be ready for it. The first drill we're gonna do is a box drill, which is basically two threat targets, six round drill. You're gonna have two to the upper thoracic on one target, two to the upper thoracic on the other target, and then a headshot on each. This is dealing with two threats, which we didn't show before, but having to load up each threat with trauma before you do what we call security shots in the head because again, they could have body armor, they could be inebriated with intoxicants, and the, the threat is not neutralized, and we wanna make sure it's neutralized so we don't get hurt. All right, bud, let's do a lateral step to the right on the threat command, and we'll do a, four, a six shot box drill. Okay, ready? Okay, same drill mark, lateral step to the right, six shot box drill. Ready? Threat! Looks like we're hitting some bad guys here, but our next drill is gonna be what we call a spread fire drill, where we're moving on multiple bad guys quickly and getting out of the line of fire. Threat! We can't train enough. And certainly there's not enough hours in the day and enough ammunition and su supplies and resources to do it all the time. But we are very, very fortunate to be able to train far more than we used to in the traditional patrol days. And it's really paid off to good effect. And we've come out alive on many dangerous grow raids because of it. The application of this drill and where it's really relevant is when you have multiple threats and they're all armed. It's that oh my goodness moment. Um, this is where you get into one, two or three, more than one threat and obviously you've got to deal with three threats. You're by yourself, which game wardens you know, oftentimes are, and obviously you saw some movement, so we're getting out of the line of fire to make ourselves a harder target to hit, and then we're following it up with getting trauma in the upper thoracic areas to stop the threat as fast as possible in every threat that we encounter. If it's one target, then we, we shoot until that threat is neutralized. If it's two, three, we do the same thing. What we want to remember is, if I just put all my shots on this target, then find this next threat, and shoot it too late, that guy could shoot me and put me on the ground while I'm still dealing with this guy. So the, the purpose of spread fire is get some trauma in every threat as quickly as possible and then come back for security shots where you need to so you survive the ordeal. Being on target not only saves the lives of the members of the MET team, but also protects the general public as these cartel camps get closer to cities, homes, and schools. You're watching Modern Shooter. In the United States, currently 10 states allow recreational marijuana, with more expected to approve. Then, there is the black market, which breeds illegal grow operations such as these, run by drug cartels in the hills of California. And it's a problem that's much closer than most think. John Norris is a California game warden who heads the marijuana enforcement team, a small band of fellow game wardens whose battle it is to not only locate but destroy these illegal and very dangerous operations. As we continue to go through this story with John and talk about the illegal grows and just how deeply uh, seated the cartel is here in Central California, the biggest thread that keeps coming through, the, the most eerie aspect to me anyway about all this, is just how close to mass population all these grows take place. Now, John, I know you brought me to this spot for a specific yeah. reason, right? Yeah, uh, the main reason I brought you here is to show you that um, here we got really pristine mountainside, really thickly wooded, you know, public land that's hard to access in many places. And this is where we've had a number of cartel grows over the last 15 years. In fact, up here was where we had our most really gruesome and most violent where my partner warden was shot through both legs by an AK-47 in 2005 and barely survived that ordeal when we were ambushed. And that's the eerie part. Let me show you just how short that journey is from where that destruction starts 
till it gets to mass civilization right there. Less than a mile. To show you how brazen some of these cartel uh, grower groups are, we had our six officer involved shooting, our six gunfight in the Santa Cruz Mountains. A third of that grow site and some of the growers trails was actually on a children's summer educational camp property called Camp Loma. And these guys were working in and around these kids for several months before we detected the grow and took that grow out. The growers in that grow had AK-47s, they had SKS rifles, they had sawed-off shotguns, uh, they had defensible positions to take out anybody that got into their camp. That really puts it into perspective of how brazen these guys will be to make a 10, 20, 30 million dollar profit off of one grow site. And that's why we do what we do. So on this next drill, we're gonna be doing what's a long gun to handgun transition. And the reason we do this drill is, if you have a malfunction with the rifle or the long gun, the shotgun, whatever you're using for a long gun, uh, within 25 yards of your threat target, you gotta be ready to very efficiently and smoothly transition over to your handgun as a secondary weapon and engage and neutralize any threats needed. Um, when it, you're dealing with pistol belts, rifle belts, battle belts full of magazines in different places, or chest rigs or plate carriers. This is kind of a, a bit of a kit, kind of designing drill to make sure all your stuff fits and your equipment doesn't hinder you from doing the job you need to do to save some lives. So that's what we're gonna uh, demonstrate today and practice is coming up with the rifle and the shotgun, running out of rounds before we intend to, immediately transitioning over to the handgun to finish the threat, and doing it as smoothly, accurately, and efficiently as possible. Threat! Get it red! Covering! One thing about this unit is, all the guys on the team um, are exceptional game wardens, that, but they're some of our best tacticians, man trackers, their field craft and stalking ability to catch bad guys and, and stalk and find them in the woods is, is second to none. Uh, and the shooting so skills and defensive tactics skills obviously are, are at the top. In real world situations, in our mission operating environment, we don't always have the perfect cover, perfect concealment to pick where we're gonna shoot from or how we're gonna protect ourselves from a deadly force threat. And out in the woods like uh, on the ranch and beyond all over California and other states, sometimes we have to just improvise and use whatever concealment and cover we can find in the field. So we're gonna use these barricades today to simulate using cover on the fly and getting in and out of a deadly force situation. See the gun, stay away from don't it, move. keep the guns out. Stay down, don't move. Stay down, don't move. Armed suspect is in custody. Clear! Clear! Sit rep! Ibsal's up! Norse is up! All clear! Good job, bud. Up next, sniper training in the battle versus illegal cartel right. camps right. and in search right. of the perfect kill shot. This Money. is Modern Shooter. Hey everybody, welcome back to Modern Shooter. You know, earlier we introduced you to John Norris who really has built a thin green line of defense between you, me, and everybody else and those cartel guys who are destroying our environment. 
the guys who he trains with who stand alongside him, those are our line of defense and they have to prepare for some pretty nasty stuff. A, nasty men defending these grows, but also some pretty nasty terrain as well. John, you know, at first it didn't make sense to me at all with someone like yourself being, you know, a, a game warden as the basis of your career, why you got on the Met team or, or why it was, why that's become your focus, right? I, at first glance, it, it's like you guys take the bad guys, you stop the marijuana grow, you take them to jail, it's over. But there's so much more that goes on to that entire equation. Right. And it all ends up right here, doesn't it? You know, Luke, you hit it on the head. Everything is right here. When you talk about water, water is life. and. Those toxic poisons that these trespass cartel growers are doing and what they're just doing in and around the headwaters of this pristine sanctuary of this clean water is exactly why I co-developed the MET team and why we have the team we did and why we were very blessed to be supported administratively to take part of the department, not all of it, but an essential part of the department to focus on this particular environmental criminal. In any given one week period in our summer months, I mean about May and October, we're probably doing seven to nine missions a week. Plant numbers are probably around 50,000, give or take, that we're eradicating. And the number of bad guys we catch, it certainly fluctuates, but we're probably getting two to five you know, cartel growers, usually armed, almost always armed actually, into custody. Um, and then uh, in addition to eradicating all those plants, we're probably taking out 10 water diversions and taking out somewhere around two to maybe 10 tons of grow waste and trash out of the woods to restore those sites back to their pristine nature before they were, uh, they were tampered with and basically diluted. All right, so we've been running around doing tactical shooting with the carbines, the shotguns, the pistols on the static line, the dynamic uh, barricade course. Now we're going to get down on the ground and get really dirty, kind of sniper style, like we on Delta Team like to do with Matt. Um, this, is a, this is a technique we can share that's pretty universally known in sniper communities um, and in sniper schools for pretty much all teams, and it's called command fire. It's basically training as snipers to do precision rifle work at intermediate to long ranges at exactly the same time. So what we're trying to do is get one, two, three, four, five, as many shooters as you have on the line able to time their shots that when they get the fire command, all those guns sound like one big boom, one big cacophony blast, so all those bullets hit as close to simultaneously as possible on their targets. Okay, we're gonna bring Luke in to call the command fire drill so Mark and I can both shoot. So we'll listen to Luke's drills and we'll get these nice, clean, simultaneous shots on his command. Here we go. Ready, ready, ready. That was money. Ready, ready, ready. Money. Ready, ready, ready. Money. Ready, ready, ready. Money. Thanks for the help, good job. It is fantastic watching you guys do that. It's clear you're in there the first time you've run that drill. We like to practice it, but it's a lot of fun to do too. All right guys, check this out. Nothing but headshots. Things are looking good. Be sure to get the latest book by John Norris on his team's battle with the marijuana cartels, Hidden War, available in March at GunDigestStore.com. Check out Modern Shooter and Gun Digest online and on Facebook.